Hi Sagittarius, here's a general look at your solar chart for April 2016 and some astro notes for the month ahead. We're going to get um, uh, with the sun in Aries, a fellow fire sign, so that's always good for your sign being a fire sign. The energies feed off each other's, but uh, we're going to have, and this is globally really, we're going to have a lot of uncertainty and confusion and not knowing, you know, where to expand, where to cut back, who to believe, who not to believe, um, you know, who, who's, who who is um, going to back up really uh, what they're promising etc um, but um, there's some you know there's some stuff going on for you um, obviously for each of the signs individually um, and for you well um, it, I would say that um, anything uh, to do with uh, children um, anything to do with um, speculative ventures, creative ventures, projects and the like. Also um, leisure pursuits as well. Uh, there's going to be sort of a certain amount of action there over April. So let's start from the, take it from the top here. For, uh, uh, until the 12th there is going to be some shifting around, some element of surprise, you know, and maybe tweaking plans, changing plans, making plans suddenly when you weren't planning to um, uh, because that is uh, Uranus and Pluto going over the degree of the sun. They're, they're, they're all crossing each other's degree. That'll be Pluto first and then Uranus. So the whole thing is going off from the beginning of the month up until the 12th. And then we have on the 7th a new moon, a significant new moon because this one is in Aries uh, and it is conjuncting Uranus and going across the degree of Pluto with some very uh, strong stabilizing energies coming in uh, in a friendly kind of a way from Saturn, uh, which is always a good thing when you have Uranus and Pluto around, I would say. So um, this new moon um, is in the area of, um, for you, the, set, the same area that I've just mentioned, um, children, creative ventures, speculative ventures, leisure pursuits, and um, this is like a new, um, a new little chapter opening here from April the 7th because that new moon energy will be unfolding itself over the subsequent month and um, changes in the air. Um, if you happen to know uh, the degree of your sun or rising sign or moon or indeed any other planet or important point in your chart, that'll be particularly between 15 to 23 degrees. Um, so remember to be flexible. You're going to have to be flexible and adaptable. Now your sign is like that anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of a stretch. Um, but do expect, expect the unexpected and kind of go with the flow, bend with the winds as it were and um, don't get too restless, don't be precipitate, don't be hasty so you end up tripping over your own shoelaces or somebody else is tripping over their shoelaces. Um, uh, now Saturn is coming in to give the stability there um, kind of long term so um, and with her in a good mood like she is uh, at the moment, and of course uh, Saturn's in your sign, um, Saturn has a very maternal, protective side to her. Um, uh, she rules the, um, the skeletal system. She rules the skin. The skin protects. The skeletal system keeps us upright and all animals, you know, with, we've got an internal skeleton. Uh, but also exoskeletons as well, like shells on the outside. So Saturn rules all of that stuff. And you will notice, maybe some of you already, that the opposite sign to the Saturn rule sign, which is Capricorn, the opposite sign to Capricorn is a crab. And crabs have their skeletons on the outside. Goats look pretty bony though, don't they, as well. Um, uh, and uh, have you ever seen that one done by Picasso, that, uh, that sculpture of a goat? I, I've actually touched that. I've I've actually been right up close to it. It is it is beyond goat. It's so goat, <laughs> uh, but very bony. So um, yes, Saturn has got this maternal protective side, and in this mood she's in here, helping out, programming into this eclipse. Uh, sorry, not eclipse, but it's kind of a little bit similar, really, to a lunar eclipse. This new moon energy. Um, of this energy of change and uh, like a, um, a, a fresh start happening over this coming uh, month from the April April the 7th point. 
Now we've got a lot of uncertainty globally. We've got Mars um, close by degree to Neptune. Mars is in your sign at the moment, so it's very dynamic energy. You're being having a lot of demand on you, maybe, uh, and you're, you've, got, you've got to use your energy wisely. But um, Mars is um, going over Neptune by degree, and also that's all months really, but the strongest in the first part of the month. As it starts to wane in the second part of the month, we get Jupiter coming up onto and uh, coming on to Neptune. So um, we have this um, uncertainty, maybe lack of confidence because um, it's not far enough through the process to know quite how to behave or what to decide or what action to take here, whatever the context is. Um, so um, uh, you've got to maybe um, just go with instinct uh, um, and try not to make any like, you know, uh, earth shattering decisions or dramatic sort of gestures until this is processed through a little bit more, maybe on into May. Um, but uh, another way this can be working is putting ego on one side and really stepping aside a little bit, bit in order to be, to give a space or a support uh, for, to others. Um, and maybe put, putting one's one's desires on on one side to give that that kind of support um, to others. Um, and uh, uh, also another way this can be working is that sometimes you feel that your boundaries are being impinged. Now, how how you react to that is totally up to you. But this is the kind of thing that can be going on here. Uh, and uh, also this time you may have to lean on somebody else a little more. It can work both ways. It can be that somebody's leaning on you a little more or you're leaning on, on somebody a little more, you see. And then we have um, idealistic Jupiter opposite uh, dreamy Neptune from the second half. Um, and again, this idea of uncertainty and maybe sometimes confusion and not quite knowing who to believe or what to follow up on or who to follow is is going on but if it looks like a duck quacks like a duck then it probably is a duck um and uh, also this thing about being you know supportive to others that's fine but don't try to be you know be a martyr don't try to be a superhuman a warts and all human will do very nicely thank you um and probably even better uh, uh, so, but at the same time as that, that's m more strong and stronger in the second half of the month. Uh, we have Jupiter and Neptune stronger in the second half of the month. We have Saturn there. Um, and Saturn, you know, Saturn gets a bad reputation, but actually um, she is a fantastic holding energy. Uh, she's cautious energy. She's a protective energy. Um, but when she's in... Um, a hard, hard angle, then sometimes that over-limiting side comes out, you know. Uh, so one feels a bit straight-jacketed uh, instead of just, you know, lightly held in a harness, as it were, um, thinking of little children for some reason. So um, this is time for um, you to be expanding. I mean, yeah, Jupiter... Uh, loves to expand but within the rules within the parameters of the limitations that are going on at the moment whether they are you know rules conditions circumstances physical whatever you know but within that um, have, have fun grow grow learn a lot um, yes there could be some tension sometimes but uh, just it's almost like being wound up a little bit, I suppose. Um, be cautiously optimistic and move forwards with a plan or a project because even though it might at times be um, fraught with obstacles, um, if you feel that it's going to progress your life, there's a lot of progressive trends coming in here, you see. So if you feel that sweet kind of taste of freedom coming your way, even though you've got to kind of cut your way through these brambles to get there, then you 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 know you you've got to keep going in that direction because it, it you are likely to be successful. 
um, and take any opportunity you can to learn something new, broaden your horizons mentally, physically, you know, travel for some of you, learning, education for some of you. Um, now, late month, we got transiting Uranus, transiting Pluto and transiting Venus all together. And uh, that means more, more, more meaningful relationships, um, getting more involved emotionally um, in, in your relationships. Um, or maybe it's just a sort of atmosphere around you, perhaps like a little bit like that, but also changeableness or rather not necessarily change, but but um, changing circumstances related to your relationship or or, or your relations, indeed, um, your close relations. Um, not necessarily family, but they can, they can can be very much can be, yeah, um, because that's where you've got Neptune, you see, and Neptune is about a little bit about sacrifice in that area of family, but also to do with place on the map and um, your your space inside outside. Um, so the, there's a need for you to remain centered but flexible, realizing that you're in a progressive trend here and um, trying not to be too, um, even though Mars is in your sign, this is the thing, Mars is in your sign, but just at the moment, particularly in the first half of the month, I would say. Although, yeah, the second half of the month, <clears throat> okay, April, <laughs> I would say. Um, you have to see how things are panning out before you're making up your mind totally or, or taking a, a de de definite, um, pursuing definite ends or, or, or taking actions. Um, and um, you should be fine, but uh, yes, the pro progressive phase there. Um, the thing is, there could be people around who are promising, the, you know, the moon pie in the sky and are they really going to follow up on that so there's going to be that kind of thing um wifting wafting around the planet not just for your sign as well um yeah and hidden things yeah definitely hidden things but um all right so that isn't happening so much um in 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 may now you do have mars in your sign you've had mars in the previous sign up until early march that's scorpio but you do now have mars in your sign this is the time for you to be more dynamic decisive really taking the bull by the horns but maybe it should be like you're being like that but you're in a holding pattern because you are f seeing how it's going you are seeing how it's panning out. Um, so that can be applied to your personal life, but also to the bigger picture. Maybe the two things are dependent on each other. You know, circumstances outside of your control, um, and you have to just see which, which way the wind is blowing with that and the writing on the wall before you can know what to do for yourself personally, in your personal goals, you see. It might be like that. Um, and um, Mars, though, is good, you know, brings hustle and bustle, um, initiating things, taking action, plunged into situations, which uh, means that you've got to be more assertive, you've got to step up to the plate more and uh, get you working harder and uh, uh, d just take enough, you know, put your feet up um, because Mars can run you ragged. So just customize things as much as you can to suit yourself. Now, um, you have, we have, well, we have the sun in a, in a bright, cheerful, uh, uh, playful sort of area. I mentioned earlier the area to do with um, children, leisure pursuits and uh, creative interests um, and doing things which you feel uh, you, you value and are empowering. Um, Mercury and the sun are there. Mercury moves out of there on the 6th and focuses your mind more on the naughty details, the job, um, uh, chores, work, the practical aspects of life. Venus um, has been uh, um, in, at the root of your chart over uh, March, much of March, and until the 6th is still there, but then Venus moves out of there and goes into um, the house of fun, as I call it. So socializing, um, you know, mixing, mingling, just having more access to enjoyable, type situations, um, entertainment perhaps, uh, leisure, again, pleasure, uh, romance, uh, children, 
um, and uh, any any speculative things. So again, um, personally empowering um, type um, pursuits or, or activities or, or, or sort of pastimes, strongly starred and, and feeling that you're not alone, feeling that others are appreciating you, you know, and uh, you are appreciating them, so getting admiring glances maybe for some of you. And then we have um, the sun moving um, uh, into this uh, area of practical day-to-day -day niggly chores and details from the 20th. So in fact, the sun comes in there on the 20th, uh, Mars went in there on the 6th. Now Saturn is in your sign uh, and will be there until late 2017. And so um, uh, this is you um, being more sensible and responsible about your progress in life, uh, where you want to get to with your life, um, finishing things off that maybe you've started, you know, or really attacking something now that you've left in that pile in the corner to gather dust and cobwebs for so long. This is it. This is the time. Uh, so sometimes through adversity, you will steadily be building this new paradigm, these new routines, these new schedules, uh, inside, outside. It's, of course, it's about your physical body as well. And the thing about Saturn coming into a sign often makes us feel older, <laughs> especially those of us who are already are older. <laughs> um, so, uh, but no, young people as well, they can start feeling world weary, you know, oh God, I've been here for 25 years, you know, that's a long time. Um, well, you know, they don't really have problems. Um, um, yeah, and um, this is forming the armature anyway. This responsibility, this you taking yourself more seriously of a better way of life in the future. And you Sagittarians born December the 5th to the December the 8th, or with 14 to 17 degrees rising, uh, will feel the energy the most um, this forecast period. Jupiter is in your area of career and overall life direction. Uh, that's your ruling planet, so you have a special interest with Jupiter. Jupiter's got a special interest in you. So this is an area where you're going to be learning and growing into new things, new doors opening. Not all of them will be leading to your highest good, so you will have to separate the wheat from the chaff as you go forward. This is going to be here until September. And um, you could be puzzling sometimes over the which, which is the best way to go, but enjoy the ride. You know, it's all about experience here. So, um, and uh, you will, if you're going towards something that you have a pull towards or a leaning towards inwardly, then outwardly, uh, this is the time with Jupiter transiting that area that you will be able to externalize that inner identity more out into the world freely without somebody else's rules being imposed on you. Well, that's the, that's the idea anyway. And now Saturn, uh, you, you uh, sorry, Sagittarius, you Sagittarians are born the 3rd to the 7th of December with 12 to 16 degrees rising. You're going to feel that energy the most. Remember, um, this is, you know, um, it's not just those degrees, it's the whole sign. It'll be as you go away from 12 to 16 degrees, it'll be, or, or 3rd to the 7th of December, it'll be, you know, pretty, pretty strong on either side of those. And then it, it kind of diminishes as it goes out, but it's still resonating. Uh, Jupiter uh, across the whole of your sign from Virgo. Um, during uh, the long transit of Neptune in your home area, sometimes you've got to sacrifice your own style for that, the way the way others like it to be. But remember, you've got to try and weave it in a way so that you protect your privacy. You have your sacred special place. I cannot emphasize this enough. With uh, Neptune down there at the root of your chart, you need a bolt hole. You need a way of escape. Um, and um, all will be well because you mustn't be stressed. Um, and uh, because if you're stressed, you can't do your best for others, can you? Or for yourself, uh, taking all this responsibility for yourself now. And that only comes around once every 29 years. So, you know, it depends on which cycle you're in, the first, the second, or the third, because the third is probably the last. Um, Yusaji is born the first to the third of December, or with 10 to tw 12 degrees rising, you're going to feel that energy the most. Well, if you think, you know, they're 30 years roughly each. I mean, you know, yeah, it's probably the last one. Last time it comes into your sign. Anyway, um, or rather, we should say, because, of course, you might have been born... 
oh that gets complicated um that's it for april if you know your rising sign your moon sign listen to those if you want to check anything out this is on my website dianagarland.com and i will see you the next time